There is an overwhelming amount of people who are disappointed that I am not engaging in the conversation over what's happening in the Middle East. And let me tell you why. Because it's terribly complicated. Only the very uneducated, and let's call it, for lack of better words, morons, will step out publicly and weigh in on an opinion uh, on something that they have very little info. I guarantee you, if I went out on the street with a microphone and asked people, do you know what the Treaty of Lausanne is? You'd probably have people looking at me like I've got three heads. So if you don't know history, and I'm not even talking biblical and the problems that are biblically grounded with the Middle East, my suggestion is don't start making prognostications or talking about things that you don't even know the history about. Most people have the basic, basic history of the period that basically brings us to 1948 and Israel's statehood. But there is a long history behind that, and a smart person will look at everything now, right now, let me just say it like this. There are a whole bunch of people that are uh, parading, protesting, whatever they're doing, each for each side. Let me tell you what I don't agree with. I don't agree with violence. I don't think there'll ever be a reason. But it has, since the beginning of time, been that war is war, and whether it's over money or land or money and land, religion, politics, whatever that is, unless a person can wrap their mind around this long and sordid relationship between the Palestinian people and the people who now identify as Israeli, you are not going to get me to make a statement on this because, like I said, knowing the history, and first and foremost, and this book tells us and I spent a couple of weeks talking about this when I looked at the Lost Tribes. If you want to trace the history of that little swath of land, this is why I won't weigh in. Because God told the tribes to go into the land and expel their enemies, kill them, wipe them out. He gave them permission to do that. And did they do it? So my attitude is you got to go way back. There's several kind of uh, bifurcations here. I know bifurcation means two, but several forks in the road along the way. One of them is to go back big, biblically to look that the very people that would like to say or proclaim or identify with are the very people that did not do what God told them to do. Then you've got another issue which is if people don't know the history of that land being successively occupied after the fall of Jerusalem. And all you have to do is look at how many people occupied that land in its totality. Don't talk to me about a little strip of land. The Treaty of Lausanne, for example, was penned in 1923 that in 1924 was enacted that basically said that anyone who was a holdover from the Ottoman Empire would essentially be labeled as a Palestinian slash Palestinian national living in that land. That's, that predates Israel's statehood. So if you're going to weigh in on this, unfortunately, there's no winner here. Now, biblically speaking, and for prophetic reasons, if there would be enough evangelicals that understood the reason to stand with Israel and not, I've said this before, it's not because of modern day Israel. Does that surprise you that I'm saying that? No. Modern day Israel actually likes to use America when it needs money, when it needs help. We're talking about what's in the Bible concerning biblical Israel. And I separate the two because what we talk about in the world today if you've heard me say this, God put a bookmarker down on that land. That's it. That's all. But you have too many people who don't know that this history of these people, both peoples, 
Many of the Palestinian people trace their lineage back to a people known as the Canaanites. So you tell me. Now, this book, which I believe doesn't lie and has the truth in it, just the same truth, by the way, when people like to talk about identifying the Semitic people. I'm, I get really tired of this because it's uneducated talking heads that are given talking points that just regurgitate to the masses without educating people. Yes, there will be a massive war in that little swath of land biblically described for us in the book of Revelation. That's a fact, Jack, and if you don't like that, c'est la vie. Is this that? I'm going to tell you right now, this controversy or this clash, whatever you want to call it, is just another page in a long part of these people's intertwined history, a long history of hatred, a long history, just as much as can anybody tell me, would you even dare try to sort out the differences that the opposing Shiite and Sunni go at it and they fight? Would you ever try and sort that out? Because that is for those people to figure out who's going to be the rightful successor to Muhammad. Get in the middle of those two people and find out real quick that you mean nothing to them. It's their fight ingrained in their DNA. They must go at it. Well, guess what? That's the same problem you have in the Middle East. There is no winner. No one wins. And especially when you have innocent people who are being killed, and, and that's on either side. So for the people who are just curious or whatever, I suggest you do a little bit of reading in history. There is a, a huge history before 1948. There were motives behind making the Balfour Declaration. There was a plethora of things that if you don't understand them, and you don't know world history, politics, and how the world works, you can just get out there and take a side in ignorance, not knowing what you're siding with. So this is why I'm telling you, don't ask me. Just pray. Pray that at some point, as we've seen over decades and decades of this, that there'll be some type of agreement or a ceasefire and whether or not that happens or not, I hate to say this because I know I will draw a lot of hatred and kickback for this, but it's not. It is the world's problem, but it is not for Americans to be dropped over there so that we can lose more American blood for a battle that will never be ours. It will be the Christian's battle in the end, absolutely, or those who aren't. But until somebody has the mindset to actually try to unfold the history, there is no winner here. And I know what I'm seeing, a lot of um, right-leaning folks, they just automatically lean with Israel and they support Israel. I'm telling you something, that's, you make your own decision on these matters. But don't be so quick to jump on the bandwagon unless you've done your reading on history and you figure out real quick that there's not going to be a winner here. Everybody loses. Now you might say, well, that's, that's a non-statement. Well, that's the price of war as well. So figure that one out. I just actually watched a, uh, an interesting, something that I probably wouldn't share with you, but I watched a, an interesting series uh, done by HBO. So if you can put up with about five or 10 minutes of gratuitous, needless uh, nudity, and uh, explicit, explicit content for about 10 minutes, it gives you, it tells you the story of Americans who went to fight in the Pacific. And just that, watching that, you know what I kept saying to myself? I'm living in the wrong time. I should have been living back there. Yes, it was war, but Americans were strong, and Americans had values, and Americans had religion and morals, and they weren't looking at the rest of the world like we are today and trying to figure out how can we make everyone look like us instead of how can we become the superpower that guides, that leads. So all I'm going to tell you is we don't need to be involved, even though unfortunately we probably will. And for those people who are of the mind to pray, what you need to pray for is pray that the leaders make the right decisions. 
because all that depends on them. You've got some nutty neighbors to the east and west who are looking at this moment of weakness and deciding whether or not we will be punished. We, America, will be punished. So until that all gets flushed out, I'd say just pray for our leaders. We, we don't have a leadership here in America, but pray for our leaders that, uh, no, listen, I, I'm not saying anything that either a person who identifies as red or blue would disagree with. We need someone to lead this country who has the flex power and is unafraid to do what needs to be done. And until that time, we're just going to be a bunch of uh, talking heads spinning in circles. Until somebody can actually come in and clean all the garbage out, we'll be left as simply the folks who trust God to pray that they actually do the right thing for once. We'll see. house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord.